So it's my pleasure to speak to you today, and I'm thankful for the opportunity. Um, I'll get into it a bit later, but Library for All, you know, really at the core of who we are is we know we can't tackle the problem of 250, 350 million children and adults that can't read or write by ourselves. And so at the core of us is partnership and our desire to partner. And so this is a really great opportunity for us to speak and to he um, for you to hear all what we're doing so that hopefully that you'll see opportunities that we could work together to, to factor change and, and make change happen. So in 2010, my husband and I uh, moved to Haiti. Uh, we saw what was happening after the earthquake, and we were really moved to do something about it. And it seems kind of crazy looking back at it now. Uh, we were both from the construction field. Uh, in Australia, I had the opportunity to build a billion dollars worth of houses for the elderly and the disabled, and I loved my job. But when I saw what was happening in Haiti, I just thought, wow, like how can we just stand back and watch this? So we sold everything, we got on a plane, and we moved to Haiti. And I know what you're thinking, that's insane. And at the time, it felt like exactly the right thing to do. I can't explain that any better than that. Um, but we just knew that we could be of assistance. We knew nothing about development work. We were completely naive to what we were about to face. Um, but I actually think that was a benefit. I'm not sure we would have got on the plane if we knew <laughs> what we were about to face. But while we were there, uh, I had the privilege of visiting many, many schools. My husband was building schools and doing a lot of repair work. And, and as I was kind of traveling around with different organizations and working out you know, how we could best be helpful, what I saw in every single school I went to was a complete lack of books. I'm not talking about you know, a few. Occasionally, I would see a few books. But generally, everywhere I went had nothing, no resources whatsoever. And I thought to myself as I went around, like, this is impossible. How are these kids ever supposed to get an education of any kind when the average teacher's education in Haiti is grade six and they have access to zero books? And that's a pretty bleak outlook. And I was really just kind of depressed, to be honest, that that was what was available. But in my naivety, I thought that that was because of the earthquake. I thought, well, you know, they're, they're recovering from an earthquake. What can you expect? You know, the schools are in, in rubble. But what I came to learn was that that was what Haiti looked like before the earthquake. It had nothing to do with the earthquake. It was just years of neglect, of lack of access, lack of books, lack of availability, so many complicating factors. And that obviously really troubled me. Um, but I, I, had, I didn't know anything about libraries. I've never, I've never read a library. I've read a lot of books. I love libraries. I love books. But that was the end of my knowledge. And so I didn't really think there was anything I could do to affect change. So I kept doing what we were doing. We were making a difference. But it just kind of wouldn't leave me. And about six months in, I guess it was, I was doing some research for myself. I'd run out of books. I'd taken half a suitcase of books, and I'd read them all. And I started thinking, well, I'll borrow books from my library back in Australia digitally. I can do that. And uh, so I started looking for an e-reader for myself. And while I was doing that research, it, something just hit me. It was like a lightning bolt. I can't explain it any other way. I just had this moment of clarity that what could work in Haiti was a cloud-based digital library. Mobile phones were everywhere. Every single person almost in Haiti has a mobile phone. 2G and 3G networks, even post-quake, were working after a time. Um, and I can get better reception in parts of Haiti than I can in downtown Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that kind of thought, well, this could possibly work. And the vision was a digital cloud-based library, not just a handful of books for every student, but an, uh, the experience that you and I experienced growing up, where we could walk into a library and choose whatever book we wanted. If you're interested in machinery, then go to that section. If you're interested in animals, then go to that section. I didn't want to just decide what a child should be excited about and hand them a pile of books. We've been shipping books to the developing world for a long time, and those efforts have made a difference. But it's expensive. It's hard. And most of the time, the books that are arriving are completely irrelevant to the children that are getting them. They're in the wrong language. They're culturally appropriate. The context is so far from reality. You know, kids in Haiti don't want to read about kids playing in snow. They have no context to wrap their head around that. It means nothing to them. And that's kind of like where Library for All began. It began with a really big vision to deliver books via mobile phone networks and make culturally relevant books available to every child on the planet. 
And I know that sounds really, really bodacious when you have no history of libraries. <laughs> so I went back to the drawing board, and my plan was really just to find the people doing this and connect them into Haiti. I was meeting so many great people. And unfortunately, after um, three months of solid research, I hadn't found a single scalable model. So we had a choice. We could sell our house, which was the last thing we had, and start library for all, or we could pretend we didn't see anything. And just like you, because you wouldn't be sitting in this room if you didn't care, I couldn't pretend I didn't see enough. I didn't see anything. And so we started in Haiti. We built a digital library. It was a terrible digital library, I'll be honest. Um, it had a cobbled together library from one publisher in Haiti. And we put it in front of the kids. And I didn't have photos of that day with me. Um, but what I do have is a few weeks later. This is some of our kids in our first pilot school uh, in Haiti. And I will never forget that first day when we sat with grade one was the first class we ever launched into. And the kids were all kind of grouped or in, uh, put in groups around the room. And there was one device for each group. And they opened them up and they started looking. And all of a sudden, the whole room just erupted in shrieks. They were just screaming. They were saying, gade, gade, which means look, look. They were just so taken. The books were about kids that look like them. They were in their own language. These kids had never seen a book in their own language. I just can't even, you know, you and I, like, we speak English. We can't even fathom not finding a book in our own language. But they had never seen a book in Creole. There were so few that were available, they'd never seen it. They ran around shrieking in excitement that they would get to see a book with kids that actually look like them so that they could actually put themselves in the story and imagine what that was like. And I always thought that was really cool and I really understood the importance of that. But it wasn't actually to one of our staff recently just pointed out to me. She's an Aussie, but she's of Sri Lankan background. Gorgeous, dark skin, beautiful girl. Grew up almost into her entire life in Australia. When she came to intern with us, she started looking through our library. We have physical books in our office because we just love books. She started looking through some of the books that are actually in our digital library. And she saw kids that look like her. And she had never experienced that before. And she broke down. And she's like, how come I've never had this? I've never had books with kids that look like me. She said, this is crazy. She said, I just never even realized that that was something that was important. And it was just so interesting to like, prove the work that we're all doing, that these kids deserve access to books that are culturally relevant to them, that are in the right language. And then we can start chipping away at that 250 million and really scale this by working together to create books that really do represent the people that we're trying to, to reach. And so at Library for All, we've done that in a number of different ways. The first thing we do when we decide to go into a country is we establish an advisory board of experts. We want to scale this global, so we don't pretend to be experts in every country we work. We're really knowledgeable about Haiti because that's where we started and we've got a team on the ground there. But everywhere else, we're learning as we go. And so we establish a team of experts, and there'll be authors, professors, librarians. In Haiti, we have a 30th veteran of the library. She started the Haitian Library. She built it. She built it after the earthquake. Like These are stellar people that know what they're doing. And they help us curate the library. And we work with international publishers, local publishers, to curate the most culturally relevant library we can for every country we work in. And we continue to grow that library as we find more and more publishers. It's incredible once you actually start paying publishers um, for their content locally, how many there actually are. You'd be surprised. When we first get into a country, we think, oh gosh, there's only three publishers. And then they start coming. Word gets around. These people are legitimate. They actually want our books, and they're going to do something really great with them. And then they start. Word gets around. Georgia, who's here today, Georgia, put your hand up so people can see you. Um, please get around and talk to Georgia. She's our content manager. Um, she does an incredible managing all the advisory boards around the world and curating that content. And so then we put the content together, and then we make it available digitally on whatever device is most prevalent in the country we're working. So in Haiti, that looks like low-cost tablets. Because there's an incredible tablet manufacturer located in Haiti, if you can believe. A dustless factory in Haiti exists. I know it's hard to believe, um, but it does exist. You walk through a dust evacuator as it can get into the factory. It's pretty cool. Um, and they're spreading like wildfire across the country. Low end smartphones are not because there's a 40% tax on them. So they're not there at all. Almost not there at all. In Rwanda, it's the opposite. 
There's no tablet manufacturer yet. It's coming, but not there yet. But low-end smartphones, $50. So they're all the way across the country. And so what we've done is we've made our platform ideal for a low-end smartphone. We've translated it. It's available in the local language and uh, English and also French. And that's what we do in every country we work in. Right now, we're in Haiti, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Cambodia, and Mongolia. And we get to see incredible statistics about what our readers are doing. Because we get all the data back. You know, I'm, I'm with you. I love to measure. I love to like see the impact. Otherwise, what are we doing? And so we get to see what kids are reading. We get to see how often they're reading, what books are most exciting to them. You know, Georgia just did an incredible um, audit of our Haitian library because we're able to see what's not being read and we can take those out. And so I really encourage you, if what I've said today speaks to you, if you think that it's something that it, it can connect in with what you're doing, please connect with us. Partnership is truly at the core of who we are. Um, I know Room to Read are in the, in the room today, and um, we're extremely privileged to partner with them. Um, they've allowed us to use their incredible books in Cambodia, and we're starting to expand that. Um, and we don't pretend for a moment to have all the answers. We're a piece of a puzzle, of a huge puzzle. And so we just love to connect and work with piece, people that are doing the other pieces. So please connect with us. We can really chip away at this and really make a huge difference. Um, if we all work together. But I don't want to do it in our lifetime. I really want to flip that knowledge pyramid on its head and so that more people have access to knowledge than don't. And I don't want to do it in my lifetime or yours. Let's do it in the next 10 years. Like, really, let's do it. The technology is available. We can really scale this if we work together. Thank you so much.